Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Stelios Georgianakis. I won't hold it against you if you cannot pronounce my last name. Um, before we begin, uh, shall we try to fight post-lunch fatigue with a little show of hands? How many of you are involved in uh, delivering software to production, even remotely? Great. So how many of you find it really easy, a piece of cake? OK, so. <laughs> so this is our story at uh, Digital Engineering Services, uh, a new division inside RBS, of how we try to be the people that the next time that this question is posed will perhaps keep our hand raised until the end. And how Neo4j helped us uh, in, in this journey. So about two, two and a half years ago, we set about uh, with the investment bank, uh, the RBS investment bank, to revamp the single dealer, dealer platform called Agile Markets. Um, so Agile Markets is uh, a cluster, basically, of applications, FX trading, uh, you name it. And we wanted to do it right, so we created Zambezi. Zambezi is our homegrown um, open source style framework to deliver, to accelerate the delivery of um, customer, electronic customer experiences, basically. Digital channels, as we call them. So it's based around web technologies, HTML in the front end, microservices in the back end. And as we like to say, also, it's powered by people because there are, we are a huge bank, and the numbers are sometimes mind-boggling. Just for agile markets, there are 10, 20 different delivery teams. So uh, the developers are in the three digits already. So we created this nice platform, this, the tooling that went with it, and we gave it to people. There you go, guys. Start developing, create some, create some magic. But it wasn't all sunshine and roses. So we inherited legacy deployment processes. So manual deployments with raising change requests and iTasks for uh, different isolated um, installation teams. And it often felt like this, you know, uh, even if you are West Ham. The field was against you. Um, so we, it was even worse, though, when we were getting to the point where the legacy deployment process was, was causing, was causing uh, butterfly effects. You know, someone deploying uh, a library, because we favor reuse, deploying a library to UAT, to dev, to, to production, and then just breaking stuff, some, some minor change, just having huge ramifications. And of course, every now and then, because we're a bank, we're highly regulated, we would have to answer the question, right, so what's the state of the estate? What's deployed where? Uh, when was it deployed? What versions? And yeah, we would find ourselves as platforms supporting this ecosystem often feeling tangled almost inside this web of dependencies, teams, uh, artifacts, and then we would feel the bite. So there was a lot of complexity there and we were being slowed down, we were being slowed down. So we had to do something. So we created Dart. Um, so yeah, that's the name that was given by the team. Really, you know, do we need another deployment tool? Aren't there stuff out there that, that we could use? Couldn't we piggyback on, on TeamCity? So we're using TeamCity. Why don't we create some hooks on TeamCity and then have automated deployments? It 
wasn't, it wasn't so straightforward, unfortunately. Had we been a smaller company, had we been a startup or even a medium-sized company, then it would have been straightforward. Use an existing tool, extend it a little bit. But in our case, we had to integrate with existing golden source systems. Uh, have a system called Gel, where everything inside the bank, all teams, all users, all hosts, they're registered there. So we had to integrate with that. We wanted to expose the information and interact with Dart through a REST API. So we wouldn't want to, we didn't, sorry, we didn't want to be restricted uh, in the future on uh, whether we have a web UI or whether we want to have a mobile client, who knows. And we also wanted to start by integrating in a piecemeal fashion, not just have a big bang, big bang approach. So we also wanted to integrate with existing legacy deployment tools and slowly see how we phase them out towards our strategic goal, which is deploy in the cloud, whether that's internal or external to be decided or even hybrid. So we wanted to have this flexibility. So we wanted to have full control and we realized that we can start with something that exists, but in the end we would probably have to rewrite it. We would just keep the welcome page and everything behind would be custom made. So we might as well start from a clean slate. This is powered by Neo4j. Why? We started, we sat down about a year and a half ago. The team, you know, in front of a whiteboard. Right, so what, what are our requirements? What, what's our business model? What do we want to support? And we started drawing something that wasn't basically too different from what you see here, which is the conceptual dump, the schema, if you like, of our current graph database. And we saw that, yeah, this could be, uh, could be modeled as an entity relationship diagram, but then it kind of felt like we would trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. And we wanted the flexibility to be able to change the wings of the plane while the plane flies. And this has turned to be true because even this diagram, that's not correct because I took that, uh, that image about a month ago and we're basically releasing every two weeks. So we continuously change the schema, we continuously add features. And if we were with a relational database, we wouldn't be able to do all of these things easily, whereas here, we just add nodes and, and relationships and yeah, it works. Another strong feature, which I guess all of you or most of you are familiar with is Cypher. So probably you cannot make out the Cypher queries at the top. We just start from, from an environment and we we return uh, everything that's attached to this environment uh, at depth of two. Trying initially, when we were trying to prototype things and we wanted to have a true state query, what's deployed where, when, uh, we were just lost when we tried to model that as, uh, when we tried to, to express that as an SQL query. So it was, I don't know how many lines of joints and inner joints and outer joints, whereas here it's just natural. But the most important benefit, at least in my personal opinion, is how easy it was to integrate with Neo4j. So we are in a micro, we aspire to have a true microservices architecture. So in the end, what we wanted was that Dart will be able to deploy Dart. So Dart itself, our deployment tool, will be just another microservice. And it's really easy to just embed uh, Neo4j in your service and you just spin up a cluster. You do not need some external uh, housekeeping service like you have with other technologies. It's just one conceptual thing. So that was really important when 
we would want to deploy our services, our conceptual services now, to the cloud. So we would just deploy, package, one thing. So we're no longer, we felt like we're no longer Peter Parker, seven months uh, after it has been deployed into prod, but now we really feel empowered by that. How so? It's just refreshing now to type a few keystrokes and you know what's deployed where. I have this version in this environment for this digital channel and you just, you just know. And not only that, but you also have the information of who did this deployment, when. And also you can rewind the clock. What was the state on, of my environment yesterday at around 3 p.m.? What were, uh, what were the artifacts deployed, deployed both front-end and what were the, the back-end services? Which hosts were they deployed on? And also, and that's even more important, we can now, we're now free to implement early warning systems. So we have the information from the NPM registry. We have the information from, from Avon artifacts and their dependencies. So, right, I want to upgrade this library. Um, what's, what will be the impact of that? How many people are using it? Which teams do I need to, to speak to? Um, is anyone using this? Can I just deprecate it? All the information is there. We don't have to scratch our heads and send an email CCing 300 people. So we can just go there and, and look it up. So going forward, it's been, we feel like it's been a success because in these last seven months, its usage has been growing 50% month on month. And it, it seems that the more people are using it, the more people are using it. So they kind of find it so easy that they can uh, automate their deployments and push stuff into dev, into UAT that it, um, they almost get hooked to it, if you like, and that means increased productivity. There's no more checks uh, and marks and you don't, you don't have to plan your deployments three months ahead and uh, speak with, with 100 people. We're rolling it out to the entire of the RBS group, Lombard, um, Lombard Insurance, uh, NatWest, Ulster Bank, you name it. So, in the end, our internal market is going to be roughly around 10,000 developers. So currently we're at tens of deployments per day. We want to move to hundreds of deployments per day and we aspire that all of them are going to be successful. And since we have this knowledge that we've already seen, we want to go to the next level. So you are deploying, you are releasing a new library right, why not launch cascaded regression testing to all the downstream systems that are using it? Make sure that it really works for everyone, not just for you bef before it uh, potentially breaks down the, um, the target uh, environment that you're aiming for. We now have a single source of truth, so why not have some analytics? Perhaps not machine learning, but some information, uh, when is the peak product productivity of teams? So when are people uh, doing most of their deployments in each environment? And finally, reach our strategic goal, now that everyone is using this common tool, to be able to move everyone, having everyone on the same page, and then move everyone together to platform as a service infrastructure. OpenShift, Docker contain, doc, uh, containerized deployments, hybrid infrastructure, which before that, it would just be, you know, a dream. So that was it. And as a parting thought, it's not so much that if you were to take something out of this talk, it, it, I wouldn't want it to be that yeah, we've created a deployment and release management tool, hey. No, it's not so much about that. It's, there are 
friction points in even the, the, the slightest things like building artifacts, pushing them into an environment. And not, not everything is, uh, is well oiled. So there are tools out there, Neo4j for example, which can help you, which can help you identify these pain points and feel empowered in the end to solve your problems and generate additional information. So that was it. Thank you very much. <laughs>